Now, let's talk about the truth between the, the beef with LL Cool J and Slick Rick. Now, this isn't really a beef. I can't really even call it that because it's mutual respect between LL and Slick Rick. His problem, Slick Rick's problem was basically LL's position. <laughs> Let me explain to y'all what I'm talking about. Now, when Slick came in the game, you know, everybody know he's from England, London. Um, and that's not a style. He really lost his eyes, if it is right eye, so he wears the patch. But he styles it. And him, Lance, and Dana Dane, they had this crew called the uh, the Kango Posse, uh, something like the, the Kango Crew. And with all of them were Kangos, and, but Slick didn't wear the Kangos that everybody else wear, like you've seen LL wear the Kangos, the one with these. He didn't wear those. He wore the, the, like the flat one, the brims. So, the Kango crew, and then they all sound like Slick Rick, like they're all from England almost. They all, they got the little accent, and everybody used to like Slick Rick's accent. Like, they thought it was, like, funny. Like, he was doing the accent, but he's from England, so that's how he talked. Plus, he had some, you know, East Coast swagger to him, so it kind of, it, it was a, if you rap, the style is crazy. So, Day to Day ain't trying to do it, and they were all faking the voice, and so was Lance. <laughs> because they, they were just doing it off slick. So Dana Dane came out, dropped his album, and got and got a lot of notoriety for doing Dana Dane the thing. <laughs> so that uh, set the stage for Russell Simmons to sign Slick Rick, especially after Lottie Dottie in the show. Once they had that side A and side B, Lottie Dottie in the show, I remember having that record. Two of the most copied, mimicked, honored songs in hip hop history. Now, after this, you have uh, Russell Simmons coming in like, "Yo, that kid is deaf. That's deaf. I got, I gotta sign him. I gotta sign this kid, man. He's deaf." So <laughs> he gives Slick Rick the deal. He brings Slick in the office and tells Slick, "He said, I wanna make you a rapper." Without W Fresh, you don't need a beatbox. We're gonna put real music behind you. And we're gonna put real money in your pocket. So you tell me what you want, Ricky. You know, I I just wanna have what everyone else has. <laughs> you know, I just wanna get a chance to do my music, you know. I'm the best motherfucker in the world. First day. First day, never lie. Slick Rick. Best. <laughs> Everybody else crumbs. <laughs> so they called him Slick Rick instead of MC Ricky D. He was gonna be Slick Rick, and he liked that Slick Rick, the ruler. <laughs> Make sure you put the ruler on the end. So he wanted to be Slick Rick, the ruler. So. When they would record the songs and they're going through production and uh, they were doing Tougher Than Leather at the time with Run DMC filming a movie and he's like, man, Russell told, uh, like, man, we got to get uh, Slick Rick in here, you know, like, we need Rick in here so he could be in the movie. So they actually shot a scene while they was on tour doing the uh, Tougher Than Leather album, they actually put out the um, the Slick Rick album. They wanted to come side by side and put Slick Rick a uh, scene of him performing on stage at one of their shows in the movie. And I was like one of Russell's favorite songs is Treat Him Like a Prostitute. He thought that song was hilarious. And he was like, man, it's like a movie, man. When you rap, man, it's like a movie. 
It's like I'm watching a movie, man, when you rap, man. So, back then it wasn't called, like, story rap. It was called movie rap. <laughs> man, it's like he's telling a movie, Joe. It's like a motion picture. So, all of that Slick Rick was doing was awesome. The album comes out, blows by all expectations. Now, they've held that album greater than the Tougher Than Leather album. Though they made more money off Tougher Than Leather, <laughs> Slick Rick album was way, way light years beyond. Now, at the same time, LL album is still selling. Like, I Need Love, it's doing, it's doing stuff a rap record wasn't ever supposed to do at that time. I Need Love is still selling. Go Cut Creator Go is battling R&B songs like Cameo and Anita Baker. You know, then you see LL Cool J in the ballad with I Need Love and then Go Cut Creator Go as the singles. And I'm like, what? this? Because they had no category for rap at the time. Certain places didn't even honor rap, but the song was so great in the public demand that they had to put it somewhere in the category so they just put it in R&B just like throw it all together so when Slick Rick and LL meet you know it's like he's the head of Def Jam like he's double LL Cool J you know like that's it like it's the maximum and it was just when he came in with the crew he saw Slick like yo what's up Slick you know shook his hand it was all love and, and Slick Rook has got like this look on his face <laughs> it's like I, I take him apart you know like and Russ is like what's up they all sitting at this round table they got the press and they was trying to show off all the artists from Def Jam and the media is there, all the, like, most of that black beat and all of them, they taking the pictures and photos and and they're sitting, like, at the restaurant table. And it's, like, the Def Jam, like, lunch and meeting where they get to meet the artists and all this. And they, all the media is asking LL, you know, like, what's your next project? What you finna do? Because LL had just dropped going back to Cali and Jack the Ripper was on there and all this stuff so then you, you're gonna do an album or follow up you got this when you're getting back in the studio LL 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 nobody was really asking Slick Rick anything so Slick is feeling a certain kind of way and then one, one uh, writer got to Slick Rick and was like and LL everybody sitting at the table and it was like, well, your album is out, and your album is a smash. He was like, and yours is out of it's entirely different from everybody else's album, and this and that. And you did a lot of good things on there, but what do you think about LL success? <laughs> Man, fuck all that LL shit. It's about me. It's about me. It's Ricky D, the ruler. It's about me, Slick Rick, the ruler. Instant Slick Rick <laughs> came right in, shut all that down at the table, live. <laughs> all the other rappers there, all on the table in the in this circle. Everybody look at Ricky D, man, and just crack up. Because he was just sick and tired of everybody talking about LL Cool J and overlooking his project. And his records was taken off too. Children's Story took off and then like right after that Slick Rick was like number one. Hey Young World became like the number one record in uh, hip hop R&B charts. But it was the other songs on there, The Moment I Feared, all these other ones was just raw. And it's still one of the rawest most creative albums ever created as far as from a storytelling base period even production 
You know, it's just classic hip hop. But LL never like went into the realm of dissing Slick Rick because that's just something he didn't want to do. He actually liked Slick Rick. It was like, no, dude is ill, you know. Like, and then they was like, what do you think about Slick Rick just saying the things he said about you? He's like, oh, that's Ricky B, man. That's Slick Rick. You know, that is what it is. But L didn't want to diss Slick Rick at all because he basically didn't know anything about him to like or dislike. If, if L disliked Slick Rick, he did a good job putting a good mask on because he never said a, a bad word about Slick Rick, ever. And... Slick ended up going to jail a little bit after that, like in 1990, but he was working on the second LP that he was recording when he did the children's story, and one of the songs he did was The King, and he wanted everybody to know that he was the ruler, wasn't LL Cool J, wasn't nobody else. And he's like, I'm the king, the ruler has returned, I am the king. And he wanted everybody to know it. And he was putting MCs, anybody on notice, Ricky D is number one. So, that's why he dropped the song, The King. But no one, he was locked up when the album came and no one thought Rick was getting out at all and facing attempt murder charges. And you know that's that's just how it was for Ricky D at the time. He spent like five some odd years in jail, and the thing everything kind of fizzled out. But it was interesting because once that was going on, LL focus went towards Cool Mo D and other battles he was going through, and we'll talk about that in a second.